Hi, Perry here. If you want to understand how to go from trading time for money in a service business to building a business asset that runs without your constant input, giving you passive income, and if you want it, lots of clients for your service business, you're going to want to watch today's show. Now, in today's show, we're working with Tracy who ran a successful transport business and she got smashed in the GFC and lost everything. We're going to be looking at how that impacted her psychology and what she needs to do to come back from that and regain really good quality entrepreneurial thinking because any form of trauma and you can only say that Tracy experienced trauma after going bankrupt from the GFC, ends up impacting the unconscious and it downgrades our ability to think entrepreneurially and the entire body-mind gets wired against any form of risk-taking ever again. So today's show is, well, I reckon it's absolutely fascinating. See you on the inside. <laughs> I'm here today with Tracy, and I'm really looking forward to today's show because before we started recording, I had a quick chat to Tracy, and I think we're all going to learn a lot from what we cover off on today. So, welcome, Tracy. Thank you, Perry. What I'd like you to do, Tracy, is we're going to be working with your present business, but based on our conversation earlier, yep. I think that I would like you to just share a little bit about your business uh, pre-GFC and yeah, just share a little bit about that business, what you were doing, number of staff. Okay. All right, that business, Perry, was a transport business. My husband and myself had uh, established, uh, my husband had originally established it, built it up over a number of years and then I became involved in the business as well. And we grew that business. Uh, it was getting, I guess, to a medium-sized business. We had uh, 31 staff, quite a few trucks, warehousing, all that sort of thing. So not a small operation. And we were getting some really good contracts with some big name companies for warehousing and, and, and delivery. And unfortunately, as we were gearing up for a big contract that we had, the economy started to dip at the point that we were putting out a lot of capital outlay to get ourselves ready for the contract. Now, the, the business itself had sent, it was, was largely centered around things that had to do with the building industry. So new builds, renovations, that type of thing. And while we had tried to diversify, we had a little bit, but wasn't totally successful. It was one of the things I was trying to do. But uh, when the GFC hit, of course, people started to cut back on expenditure, particularly in the area of renovations. And then we saw the new build start to go down as well. That meant that the work that we were doing was constantly dropping and our overheads outstripped our income. And we started to get ourselves in trouble, particularly with the tax office who got upset with us and forced us into administration. So we lost the business, plus every benefit that we had from the business, including our house and cars and everything, ended up bankrupt in the long run. Yeah, okay, well, lovely tax department. Yes, yes. They really helped you through the hard times so that you could get back on your feet and pay off any tax debt, but anyway. That's well, it. yeah. Yeah, they said, we, we want our money now. We said, we can't pay it. So they said, well, we'll shut your business down so you can't pay it. And I went, okay, that makes sense. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so even pre-GFC, before the GFC happened, um, you said that you already recognised that you needed to diversify. And I, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I looked, I looked at it, you know, from a business point of view and thought we have too many eggs in the one basket, which was just a natural progression of the business that just happened. We weren't deliberately piloting in that direction. Uh, but I thought we really need to diversify, just we can't depend so much on one sector. 
Yeah, and by the way, that's smart. You, mm. There was a timing issue and, and that happens sometimes, meaning yes. that, you, know, you were in a, a particular business position, uh, mm. capitalising up, as you said, for a, a contract that was coming through. And of course, the GFC happened. Um, there's nothing you could do about that. That's an out control scenario. Um, uh, and you get whacked. But before that, I just want to come back to because we might as well use this as a teaching lesson. Sure. Um, and you, you recognise that uh, all your eggs were in one basket and started to, to, to look for how you could di diversify. Yes. And, and again, uh, you know, when, when buildings, when the building industry is uh, booming, it's one of the best industries to be in by far, isn't it? Because, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, as one of my mentors say, all gains goes into land. So when things are going good, people are putting money into land and property. Um, but what happens, of course, is that in building, once there is any form of uh, downturn uh, in, in the economy, start tightening up and not spending money on property, property prices start falling and building the building game is a horrible place to be in that. Mm -hmm. so you were wise enough to, to realize you needed to diversify earlier. You just, it was a timing issue. Yes. And for those that are listening, just really important to hear what, what Tracy's communicating. If you are in an industry that can experience volatility, which the building industry can, and by the way, when we say volatility, Volatility in the building industry isn't sort of short term. You've got long term cycles. You can have seven or eight, nine years where everything's just going amazing and then there's a bit of a dip. Um, so, uh, you know, it's not super volatile, but if you're in the building industry, you've got to realize that, yeah, there are downturns. You've got to cover your ass because, again, you're carrying a lot of capital expenditure. You've got uh, payroll to pay, um, all those types of things. So, many. Uh, businesses that have specialized into the building industry have gone broke and downturned because they haven't diversified or haven't saved enough capital during the good periods uh, to protect them in the downturning uh, periods. So anyway, look, that's a, 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 just, just quickly, did you, were you proud of what you built up before you created yeah. and had, had the, the GFC hit? Yes, yeah, it was quite an achievement. Yep. Uh, considering it had grown from a business that started with about two trucks to where it was. And um, yeah, it was, look, it was quite an achievement. So yes. Yeah. So there's a pride there and we won't go into this right now, but just for everyone listening and, and I've been there, I've had this, ex this a similar experience where um, years ago, I, one of my great business partners who I'd been involved with many businesses, uh, he uh, invested some of our funds in another business that I had nothing to do with. Like I've often been involved in running three or four businesses at one time. That's been something I've done a lot of in my time, but this was something that was a real passive investment, Tracy. And mm. you know, I think we lost about, ooh, I don't know, 350 grand and, and it would, it was at a time when I was involved in another startup and had just closed another business down. So I needed that cash flow. Um, uh, but regardless, when you have things like that happen, it causes a wound in the psyche. It, it, it is hard to come back from. It, it really impacts you mentally and emotionally. So I'm, I'm pretty sure you would have got a, a, a severe kicking <laughs> psychologically after that. I, I absolutely, absolutely did. And I think the severe kicking continued for about a year. Yes. Of course. Okay. And I know when you're trying to climb out of those types of holes, it can be hard and yours was worse than mine um, because, you know, you lost everything. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and that period for me, by the way, I, I had to dig deep and I, 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 I pulled us out of it in about a year and a half, if I remember rightly, but just horrible. And I wasn't wiped out of playing the game where you were kind of wiped out of playing the game. Yes, that's correct. Yeah, we 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 were wiped out by bankruptcy rules. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So what I'm going to do, because uh, we're going to get into some strategic stuff soon in your new business, but I'm just flagging flagging to the to the viewers or, or listeners that um, there will be some unconscious elements or wounding that happened through that process that will impact Tracy's entrepreneurial thinking 
to this mm -hmm. day because when you have uh, such a horrible experience, it does all sorts of tricks on hope, confidence, um, taking risks. Um, we become very risk adverse and it's hard to have confidence after being whacked in that way. Would you agree with that, Tracy? Absolutely. Yeah, because yeah, we'll get into that. So, you know, with this work, everyone knows that we work with both sides. We work with the strategy and we work with the psychology. So, okay. So your, your, your present business, I know you, because of their conversation that you are uh, doing relationship work. You do a lot of relationship counseling. You have uh, yes. developed a, a program and a course as well. Uh, just out of interest, just from a human interest perspective, how does one go from, uh, you know, building a, a, a tran big transport business or a medium-sized transport business to relationship counselling? Is it something you loved or what, what, what brought you to that? There were always elements of that in anything I did, uh, even though, uh, like, in a lot of, lot of businesses, uh, even people I worked for, I played uh, you know the role of being hr and that type of stuff i was dealing with people i was dealing with solving issues with people and so that was always there even in even in that transport business i was involved in the hr side of it because that was something i seemed to have an affinity to and seemed to be able to get results doing it and so when the business went down after i sort of got through that period of time after it went down because it was a big shock to the system. I realized that every rule I thought you were supposed to work by didn't work. And once I started to come out of that, I thought, so what am I going to do with myself now? Because I can't start another business per se at the moment because of bankruptcy laws. And so I decided to study counseling. I thought I've always had an interest in that. Why not? Let's do that. Have to do something. Yeah, so I get, and when you communicate, I really get it, that you had an affinity for people. You would have been a good... I had, I had an affinity. I always yeah. did, yes. Yeah, great. I can really get that. And so people would trust you. They can communicate to you and you, you yeah. create a safe space for them. Okay. Yes. Now, how, how quickly did you uh, get a success as a relationship counsellor? Uh, it was, was uh, a uh, two... Well, with the practice, I ended up starting a practice, uh, which I could do as a sole trader, even though I was still bankrupt. Yeah. in the bankruptcy period and all that kind of stuff. Uh, that was a struggle. Like the whole business thing was a struggle, and it continued to struggle and struggle for ages before we started to get traction. Yeah. So, so it's so a few quite a few years where I just couldn't seem to get anywhere. It kind of puttered along in what I would call working in a voluntary capacity for a non-profit organisation. <laughs> <laughs> Not fun as a business person, especially no. after you come through. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's how I would describe the early years. Right, and then so what was the? What, I know that you've had. Um, you know, you've, you've been able to bring your business to the point where it's, mm. you know, you're, you're making money and you've got lots of clients. And mm -hmm. So what was the turning point going from being a, uh, a volunteer organisation to seeing clients and, and, and having a premise? And, well, uh, well the, turn, the turning point uh, was I got involved in your, uh, your Ignite business mastery program which helped me with a lot of the internal stuff it wasn't so much strategy that was a problem it was the internal stuff that was going on all the time that was blocking me yeah okay great so we're gonna now again this is for for listeners and viewers hmm. um one of the things that happens when you have uh a traumatic experience as a business person, which Tracy has had, is it, first of all, we tend to have a self-protection that arises in our psyches. Now, it, it has a, I'm trying to find the best way to communicate this in, in, in the fastest way possible. It's almost like the, the I'll bring this to Tracy, Tracy's uh, psyche, had that blow 
uh, after the GFC and obviously through that blow, she would have experienced a lot of self-doubt, uh, real lack of confidence. And, and here's the kicker, because the business was going reasonably well, and then it wasn't all of a sudden because of things outside of her control, then it would, it would set up uncertainty and it would also, yeah, uncertainty and risk and being confident would be seen on the unconscious level as dangerous. Now, this is a real weird thing to say in some way because a lot of people don't understand this, but I'm just going to map this out a little bit, Tracy. So, okay. So, uh, yeah, we'll go, so after that, that period, um, can you see that it would have been really hard for you to be confident about what you were doing, really hard for you to be positive? And that you're yeah. not going to revert to negativity all the time. Oh, look, abs abs absolutely. Um, when we when we got our first office, the little 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 tiny office, the first office, and it was six hundred dollars a month, one hundred and fifty dollars a week. And I went, oh my goodness, can I afford this? Can I sign to a lease on this? Uh, that's how risk adverse I was. Yeah, and that's because the, the defense mechanism to ever having that happen again, because the, the, mm. the psyche is going, I never want to experience that again. So the best yeah. way of never experiencing that again is to never put myself in that uh, position. And the best way to never put myself in that position is always to tell me that nothing's going to work, that it's not going to work out, that, that mm. um, uh, you're a fool for doing that. Okay, you remember, yep. so everyone listening and watching, remember, at some point in time, Tracy and her husband had what we all have, the entrepreneurial spirit going, let's go do this, let's go do this, we're, we're confident, and then getting some success, this is looking really, really good. Yes. And then, bang, right? So the psyche goes, never do that again, never do that again, never yeah. do that again, right? Now, this is no different to, let's just say, a horrible topic, but let's just imagine someone... A, 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 a lady's molested when she's young by by her uncle and then maybe happens again with, with her grandfather or something, right? That, that's no different, right? That girl will grow up and she will mistrust men and she won't like mm -hmm. men and she will she might become a, a lesbian as an example. And by the way, that's not the only reason someone becomes a lesbian. Mm. You've got to be really careful what you say in public nowadays. Uh, yes. Right? Um, but, but she will eschew men or, or she'll go, well, I don't want to go out with men because men are this. Now, not all men are that, but that gets set up as a protection mechanism. So your unconscious favors negativity as a protection mechanism because based on your past experiences, taking a risk means that you're going to get hurt. Right? Yeah. Now, yeah. We're going to take this a little bit sideways. We'll work on the same talk, but before we get back to strategy, let, let's just deal with some of these things. So... First of all, and many rational, uh, rationalists in general or rational business people, because we need to have highly developed strategic thinking and rational skills, will probably struggle to, to understand this concept or to buy it or believe it. But what we hold in, in consciousness, meaning our belief systems, uh, how we feel about ourselves, they help shape our realities. That they help shape the opportunities that uh, come towards us um, or that we repel. So in, in reality, we tend to get from life what we believe about life. We tend to achieve uh, from life what we believe we can achieve. And, you know, <laughs> I want to tell you a story when I first really sort of understood this principle i mean i've heard it for years and you certainly hear it in certain uh spiritual circles or a lot of new age books of, about it um but you know this is i'd have clients right and they'd come to me and i'd just see this repeated pattern played out so if they had a belief system about about men as an example all men are assholes then it's almost like that was a magnetic and because it had a, a huge emotional trauma with it, typically because they'd had experiences with uh, men that are assholes, um, uh, that had hurt them in some way, their belief system tends to attract more men that were 
assholes or someone had belief systems about money and it would you could see that no matter what they would do technically or strategically they'd always be back in that same place and my biggest example of this was a, a lady who had um uh, been had experienced a lot of domestic violence and she grew up in a household of, of violence where, where the father used to be physical to the mother um and so she grew up and and this and you'll know this from your counseling work uh, tracy yeah people unconsciously seek out uh, what they grew up with even if uh, even if they didn't like what they grew up with on the unconscious level they seek it out they're just attracted to it so of course her first husband you know she she's walking around going i'm i'm, I'm the, i don't want ever, any man to ever hit me right but yeah. her first husband hits her okay same thing and anyway this went on and on and on and she had about six relationships um and this i remember telling me the story the sixth relationship with the man she could teach i went out one night with my friends to the to the um, pub and I, mean, I remember, this is her saying this, I remember walking into the pub thinking, you know what, I'm, 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 I'm gonna make sure I never ever go out with someone that hits me ever again, okay? This is her sixth relationship, five men that she'd left. She goes into the bar and who she ended up talking about? Now you think about that, there was two or 300 people, men in that bar. And you know, it's one of those places where people go to dance, mm. have you? Well, now in reality, only a small percentage of men are violent towards women. And in reality, that's the truth. So yeah. Would you disagree with that, Tracy? No, I wouldn't disagree with that. Yeah. But that night, who does she end up chatting to, gets attracted to, uh, ends up with, again, they had a very short relationship within two months and they're broken apart. But I used to think about that. How come she walked in there and just was attracted to the guy that was going to beat her up, even though there was all these good men in there, and how is it that the man that beats women up was attracted to someone that had come from uh, lots of domestic violence in their background? Now, here's the kicker with this. So she said, I'm gonna go out with uh, women, I'm sick of men. She ends up going out with women, and she rung me <laughs> after about seven months, and guess what had happened? She'd be beaten. So there is uh, some ramifications for the belief systems uh, and attitudes that we hold in our psychology and what we tend to draw to us or what we're attracted to in the experiences that we have. So, um, and, and for the most part, logical people can understand that beliefs, especially when they're associated away with emotions drive behaviors and actions, that's easy and logical for anyone to understand and that's just basic behavioral science. Um, mm -hmm. So as an example, you know, if, if my belief says, uh, oh, I'm scared of dogs, then it's going to trigger my adrenals when I see a dog and I'm going to move across the other side of the street. I mean, everyone understands that. But when you start saying your psychology actually impacts and attracts experiences equal to your belief systems, that's where people struggle. But I, yep. I and my coaches have just seen that too many times to discount it as, as a truth. So uh, coming back to what we're working with, you've got to clean those belief systems up because as i said the psychology is now engineered not to take risk because the last time you took, took risk you get whacked yep. um, and so then negativity becomes a protection mechanism and it's weird because i'm sure you didn't like the negativity i'm sure you're trying to move past the negativity the negativity will come up because this guy i need to protect you the last time you were confident and took risks like that look what happened you get me yeah yeah, great. Okay. Yeah. Now, there's another aspect here, and this is one of the ones that I want to concentrate on. The moment that we're coming back uh, from those traumatic experiences, and we've got the uh, psyche that is now locked into negative thinking um, and locked into uh, eschewing risk, mm -hmm. um, even when there's no risk, you, your psyche would have at times just seen risk. Notice that? Uh, yes, yeah, true. Yeah. 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 Okay. We're going to go somewhere else with this. What happens, and, and this is not just for, for people that have had that experience, Tracy, where they've taken the risk and been whacked. Plenty of people walk yeah. around like this anyway. True. Uh, there's a lot of fear, terror, self doubt, any of those types of things that all human beings experience. Um, uh, but if it's not confronted and left to its own devices, it actually dumbs down our strategic thinking our logic now 
just to set this up before I go and do some work with you strategically, mm -hmm. um, to, to succeed in business and to get what we truly want, and when, we, when I say truly want on the level of our hearts, we have to have uh, highly evolved entrepreneurial thinking. And highly evolved entrepreneurial thinking is com completely different to the way that most normal people think. So as an example, um, in highly developed entrepreneurial thinking, you're looking constantly at how do I build, I'll just use a couple of examples, but how do I build uh, income producing assets that run without my constant input? Can you see that would be one? Yes, uh, yes, okay. yes. Here's yep. another one. How, how do I uh, do this so I don't have to do it again, I get paid many times over? It might be another uh, sort of high level uh, thought structure of someone with highly developed entrepreneurial thinking. So entrepreneurs, they think very differently and see things very differently. And, and, and as I constantly say, that's all about how we uh, allocate uh, and control resources, where the lower your, your um, entrepreneurial thinking, the more you think about being a resource. I am a resource. Uh, mm -hmm. that, that's dangerous thinking because if you're a resource, you end up getting trapped. But let, let me just set this up with you. Okay, so what I want to do now, just to play out and, and look at what I've just said in the real world scenario of Tracy. Yeah. Um, Tracy, if you could have a, a dream in the next, come true in the next three to four years, as an example, through your present business, what yes. would that dream look like? If I, if I could if I could have my dream, my dream would be to have a high-end motorhome that I could use to travel around Australia, revert, work remotely with clients, have a couple of counsellors working for me who would see anyone that wanted to come into the office, and I'd run it from my motorhome. I would stop where I wanted to stop. I'd do a day or two work per week. That would be my dream. Great. Okay. So let's go and work with that. To achieve that, there are a couple of things required mm -hmm. in your business and the way that your business runs. Mm -hmm. So I'll ask you, first of all, can, can you see what some of those things would be? Uh, yes. Number one, I need clients that would work remotely with me. Yep. Uh, uh, number two, we have to market in such a way that the volume of clients coming in would support the, the, the base as such, the, the office and those counsellors that worked there. Uh, those counsellors provide me with a passive income because I'm taking a portion of that income. Sure. Uh, so that that's your, your passive income coming in, if you like. Yep. Um, ideally, the type, you know, I'd need to change the type of thing I'd be doing. I'd, I'd only be working with certain clients, uh, certain more high-end clients who would pay the money to work with me, who wanted to work with me, which means I have to be well and truly established as an authority in my field. Great. All those things I agree with. Okay. Okay. Um, what difference would it make for you if you had, in accordance to that dream, so there's nothing you've said that I don't agree with, mm -hmm. if you had your uh, program running, I'm going to talk about that in a second, your program running and it, it had heaps of clients in it, what difference would that make to you? Now, by the way, everybody, what we're talking about here is a standalone education program. We'll, we'll dig into what that is in a moment in regards to relationships. And bear with me, Tracy, I probably need to segue here a little bit in the sense of just sure. set this up. Okay, so one of the things that uh, we, I want to say we, we all want as entrepreneurs, especially if you want to achieve your dreams, is you need business models that provide a certain percentage of passive income. Now, passive income means that you don't have to turn up and 
people are uh, en enjoying the, the fruits of uh, whatever that, that passive resource is. And in Tracy's case, it is training on how to uh, be better in relationship, how to improve your relationship, how to have a very good relationship. Actually, I'll, you can hop in here and quickly talk about your, your program. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Ray. Uh, the, basically, what we do in relationship work is a, a big part of it, particularly in the early stages, is education. So it's education, giving people a fundamental understanding of the various areas of relationships, say, let's take a common one, which is communication. How do I do communication in a way where it doesn't escalate, doesn't fall apart, and we don't end up hating each other? But how do I still get across what I need? How do I still get across what I want to say? So all of that type of information is in the self-paced learning part of the program. So people can do that rather than being in the session doing that. And they could do it around their lifestyle. So everyone's busy these days. So wherever they can find time, they can do that part of the program. We then back that up with, and it's packaged in the program, some face-to-face -face sessions, be that over the internet using Zoom, in the office, whichever way we go. But it's backed up with that because that part of the program says, okay, you have the information, you've learned some stuff, so let's just get right down to how do you apply it in your situation, in your relationship? How do we make this work for you? So that's the bit that we actually do with them. So we take the theory down to the practical point and make it work for them. Great, great, okay. And they can do that from anywhere in the world? Anywhere in the world, because we can do it by the Zoom platform. Great. Okay. Now, and I'm, I'm, I'm just talking about the program, not working with you or your counsellors. They, they, can do the, they could do the program anywhere in the world, because relationships are the same. And can they do the, can they do the program without getting the counselling work as well for their relationship? Can they just do it on their own? Uh, at, uh, well, you, you can do that. We, we haven't actually offered it like that at the moment, but they can do that uh, just as a self-paced work through thing. Uh, they can take it if they can apply what they learn, then that would work for them, yes. Right, okay. So just again, just, just, just so everyone on, that's watching and listening understands what we're talking about, because um, I just need to be clear here. I understand what you're talking about. You understand what you're talking about, but let's just be clear that everyone else does. So as an example, what this means for those that are listening and watching is this, Tracy has a whole bunch of knowledge about how to improve relationships. And when someone comes to see her as a counsellor, uh, she's actually saying the same thing to, to the first client in the day, the second client in the day, the third client in the day, the fourth client in the day. Okay. Now it's, it's, it's not, it's not as easy as that, but you're just saying the same thing all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Now, so we consider that educating work versus counseling or facilitating work. So counseling and facilitating is a bit different. If, if you, if you've got to keep saying the same thing to, to, to every client, then what that means is that information can be packaged up into education packages, online videos, modules that, a, a client could work through over a year or six months, eight weeks, what have you. And, uh, and that's just an easy bulk way of Tracy being able to share her information that makes a huge difference to the, to the client, but she doesn't have to deliver it in person. Now that means that the clients are paying for that. And because it's all been pre-recorded and it's a course set up on, on, online, Tracy's uh, asleep in bed at three o'clock in the morning in her RV and people are learning from her without her having to be there. And not only that, Tracy is looking in her bank account, not at three in the morning because she's got no money worries. Um, and she sees every morning that there's an extra thousand to two thousand dollars gone into her account for, for her doing nothing. So that kind of model is the kind of model that can give someone like Tracy uh, a, a life 
uh, that is meaningful and fulfilling based on what she really wants to do. Now, so what we, we look at with this type of business model is it, it's kind of like a, what we call top, top tier down, where the passivity is at the start of the business model, meaning clients don't even get to someone like Tracy until they do the training program. And that training program delivers passive income to Tracy. And she might then be able to cherry pick clients because if you're earning really good, I just will do this. I'll show you Tracy. If yep. you're earning really, really good money from your program, right? And you've got thousands of people going through your program. Uh, and uh, then what does your pricing for your session start to look like? Right? Because we're now working with the law of supply and demand because uh, <laughs> when a, a, supply outstrips demand mm. and to worry about putting their prices up but can you see if you had thousands of people in a course and yeah. only you only did eight uh, relationship counseling spots a week mm -hmm. what with your prices yes because yeah i like to say there's a supply and demand issue absolutely you can put right. them up. yeah see the difference right yeah then you, you're able to cherry pick and, and even your, your, your counsellors as an example that you earn a percentage from, which is more passive income, mm -hmm. they would charge less than you. But even with them, you can probably put the price up because if your course is performing well, uh, people are loving you and they don't care about uh, paying more if they've already got the trust factor through a course. Does that make yeah. sense? Yep, that does, that does. Yep, you can look at this two ways. Now, you, you understand that, but let me go to the audience for a second, right? Because let's just say you're, you're, you're uh, using your Facebook marketing. We'll just use that as an example. And um, uh, you, you, you're in relationship trouble. You're in relationship trouble, so you sort of look on, in the local area who, who's the relationship counsellor. And you come across some Facebook ads or some ads. And, you know, you end up going on a person's website and you kind of like them. They look good and you maybe check out someone else or oh, I like them as well. But at this point, your trust factor is, you know, it's, it's, you're not over the edge yet in, 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 in that mm -hmm. purchasing trust buying decision. So if, if you went to one of those websites and someone was charging twice the amount of someone else's website you went to, that's going to impact your decision. You're, 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 you're going to go and check out the cheaper person and you may check out the more expensive person, but you, you'll realize that the cheaper person is still there as an option. Can you see that Tracy? Yes. Right. Yeah. Now, if they've signed up for a course and they're in the course and you at, uh, at that point, the moment that they're in the course, you are now able to deliver your core expertise and knowledge and people really get that. So their trust, uh, um, their, their buying trust increases and even if you would double um, what the, the, the counsellor down the road would charge, mm -hmm. they're still likely a certain portion of that course are likely to buy from you because of their association and trust of you because of what you've delivered into the course. Okay, does it make yes, sense? Yes, it does, it does. Yep. Okay, now... So we know as, as a no-brainer, running the course up front, that, that positions you, also it produces passive income. Um, now, I, I know from our conversation that, that you, you, you now see the benefit of what I've just said, haven't you, by the way, before I go where I'm about to go. You, you get Yeah, that. absolutely. Right, great. Absolutely, yes. So I'm going to work quite quickly here because I'm very aware that you're going to be going to clients soon. So I'm going to work as fast as I can here. Okay. So now, and, and like a, a lot of people watching this or a lot of business people, can you see that potentially when you first went into your relationship business, that if you'd concentrated on building the course out first and that was your uh, entry to business, so that would have been a smart move. Yeah, yeah, I can. Yes. Right. Now that's no, that's no, that doesn't mean anything about you that you've done what you've done, right? No. Um, <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> I've started businesses when, I, especially when I was younger, and and you see, and this is this thing, right? When I said before, people aren't trained to think as entrepreneurs. In fact, what most people are trained to be is dumb cogs in the capitalistic system. 
okay? Education systems, our parents set us up to be cogs in the capitalistic system. And so our education's undermining to entrepreneurial thinking. So no mm. wonder we make mistakes about what we do. You, you, you were acting like an employee, as an example, when you first went to Yes, business. you went yes. And you're passionate then too. You go, well, I want to go and work with 30, 40 people a week, right? Yes, <laughs> um, yes. <yeah. laughs> and then you soon learn, well, I've got to run the marketing, I've got to do this and I've got to do that. Where if you, if you, if you, if you did the course up front, um, you would have, you still might be working with three or four clients, eight clients a week, 10 clients a week, but you would have 30 hours a week to concentrate on marketing your course. Yes. Right? Yes. The, the moment that you go to time for money models as a service provider and thinking, oh, I'll have the course on the side, that starts to set you up for challenges and issues because all of a sudden, as you start to build more success into your business, your success typically means that you've got less time. Right? True. Yes. Yeah. 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 And, then, and then you become a roadblock in, in, in the business. Um, mm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so in, in essence then, as, uh, as a roadblock, because I know that you have, you know, you've got a fair client load mm. um, and you, you also feel a lot of calls because one of your ways of bringing clients into your business is they've got like a 15, 20 minute call with you or something like that, right? Tracy? Uh, 15 minute call, Perry, yeah. Yeah, yeah, great. So, so your your conversion funnel relies on you yes it does yeah and then then your client delivery i mean you've got your offsider that you are able to funnel clients to but then your 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 clients require you okay and that's yes. where we start to move into roadblocks now i am aware of time so and you need to go and get with clients exactly what we're talking about isn't it right yes yes yeah <laughs> It is, it is. <laughs> it is. How good would it if we could spend another 25 minutes together and really nut this out, right? You get me, right? Yeah, I, I, can, I can do 15, Perry, before yeah, right. I... Right, okay, okay, so, good. Yeah. Okay. So, then, to, to bring the money in, you've got to spend time with clients. Yes. Yeah. So, then... What we need to do, and because then there's a tight thing. Well, if I want to go now grow the, the, the program, growing the program, because as we said before, the program's going to give you the freedom, it requires a whole different form of marketing. Yeah. Marketing a service business. Get me? Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. And to build that takes time. And it takes money, but more time than money. Well, I'll rephrase that. If you've got money and time and you know what you're doing, you're going to get where you want faster. Right. If you don't have the money, then you, um, your time becomes really important and you'll get there slower, but you'll get there. So as an, as an example, if you are to, to build the program, uh, income, the first thing you have to do is be positioned as an authority figure, a total yes. authority figure, the yes. best. Right? Yes. You need to out com com compete, outperform. You must have uh, USPs that are, uh, really make you stand out from all other counsellors mm -hmm. in the relationship space. And then you have to back that up by constantly producing content or, a, a, by the way, one good quality webinar could do it for you, right? Mm -hmm. Right? You could use a yep. Facebook strategy into a webinar, and I just for everyone listening, you'll get this in a second, into the webinar, and the webinar could close the people into the course. So a really good quality webinar where people get to see your expertise, really get to feel your expertise, where you explain at the end what they're going to get in the course, and especially if you take all risk away from them, um, meaning that if, you know, things like in the first month of the course or the second month of the course or by such and such a date, if you're not happy with what you're getting, you can get out and get all your money back. Yeah. Your webinar is going to get people into that course and you'll be making money passively. Now, then the effort and energy goes into getting people to watch the webinar. Now, that will mean content, 
or it could just mean a good Google ad strategy or, or Facebook book strategy, getting people into the webinar. But regardless, once people have watched that webinar, you're going to be wanting to send them content, you know, little video snippets, because let's just say 50% don't sign up from the webinar or 70% don't sign up from the webinar. You're still then wanting to prove to them your yeah. expertise. And um, that means you're going to be producing content. Okay, so you can see all those things take time, but once they're working, they work on their own to produce the income. Make sense? Yeah, it does. It does. Right. Now, um, so then what you've got to be able to do is transition from this thinking of I've got to serve clients to I've got to build this as, a, uh, as the priority while knowing I still have to keep income coming in if you're not fortunate enough to have the capital, which yeah. I'm sure you don't after what you had expected. No, no we don't. Then you've yeah. got to start to navigate and minimize client impact on your time that needs to go into building the passive income model. But yes. at the same time, how do you work and keep income coming in, but minimizing their impact on you at this point? Now, I also want to come back to something else you said. <laughs> I said, I'm trying to pack this in. Um, you said, uh, I would like people people want to be, they'd want to work with me online. So to have my dream of being on the RV, mm -hmm. in the RV, mm -hmm. and work with yeah. some clients off the back of my program, we'll say that now, I want them to be able to want to work online. And I sort of picked up from that, and I think you'd said something to me one other time about how uh, your clients don't want to work with you online, right? Yes. Correct? That's something you've yes. experienced. Yep. Uh, yes, yes. Yeah, they keep saying, no, I don't want to do this face to face, yeah. Great. Okay. Well, I'm going to tell you one of the great benefits of people coming through the program. So people that have come through the program, what are they already used to doing? Well, if they come through the program, they've already actually got the program online. They've downloaded online. They're listening to audios. So they're already in that zone. They're already in that zone. And again, mm -hmm. because of demand will outstrip supply, um, mm -hmm. you, there's two, th two factors there. Well, that's the only way that you're going to do business with them. Yeah. Okay. That's the only way. And again, because you've been pos positioned so highly through the course, everyone trusts you. They know how good you are. Mm. When you say, no, well, I don't do this in person because I'm in my RV, uh, mm. you know, up in, up in the Northern territories, then they're there going, oh, I've got no problem with that. I know Sonia down the road, she's a relationship counselor. And she'll do it in person, but I don't want to go to her. I want to go to Tracy because I, 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 you get me? See, that's what yeah. happens. When yeah, you're... yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Uh -huh. And yeah. secondly, they're already used to working online. Uh, incidentally, Tracy, I made that a rule years ago. We, we went online early. Um, yeah. uh, I remember Georgina, for those of you who don't know, Georgina's my head coach and uh, she used to be my operations manager. But we, we, this is in the, the days of dial-up, you know, we, we were doing information products in the days of dial-up, Tracy, because yes, yeah. I used to travel a lot because of pre-internet, doing running trainings and, and working with yeah. internet, uh, sorry, investors. And then obviously because of the internet, we were able to, uh, well, I could see this is how I really wanted to work. And everyone said, you're mad. You're absolutely mad, right? No one's online. No one wants to go on the internet to do this sort of stuff. And, um, you know, you, you'll miss out on people. But again, here's another important thing to say that operating online, your, your running costs are so low. It doesn't matter if you get less of a market share. Your profit margins are higher typically, right? Mm. Um, yeah, there's yeah, all, sorts, yeah. Yeah, all sorts of ways of looking at that. But to be honest, we, were, we did very well out of that. So, uh, again, one of the things that I'm going to quickly look at is you've got to look at how you free your time up. You can see yeah. that the problem is I've got yeah. to keep money coming in by getting clients. So I've got to free my time up. Now, you have a kind of a unique skill as a, as a counsellor. Mm -hmm. you know, even, even people probably can tell this when you communicate. You're able to work with people deep into their feelings, aren't you? Yes. Yep. But 
what happens when you get clients that, you know, especially men clients that don't want to feel their feelings. They don't, they're, they're emotionally disconnected. They're not, they're not comfortable. And this is really important for those listening or watching. Many men are so disconnected from who and what they are because they've been indoctrinated to live out this kind of puppet show about what a man is supposed to be. Um, not their fault, by the way, that's just what we've been brought up in. And yes. therefore they, they don't even know how to talk about their emotions or they have no ability to connect to their emotions. And so going to a counselor for that type of person's what, Tracy? It's pretty scary because they go, well, you're going to talk about all this feely stuff. I don't know what to do with it. I don't understand it. So there's a lot of resistance there. Right. Okay. Now, how well do you get on with builders and people of, of tradies and, and people that work in those very macho environments? Well, the first thing that I say to them, if I'm talking to them on the phone, or when they're in the office, I go, first thing I, and I always start with, let me tell you a little bit about how I do things. And one of the things I say, I'm very straightforward. At times I can be downright blunt if I need to be. We're not going to talk around in circles, hoping someone has light bulb moments. We're not doing that. And they usually go, oh, that's good. That's good. I like that. Uh, because to talk their language, if I have someone that indicates to me, and a lot of them will, I, I, I don't do this feeling stuff. And I go, that's fine, because we're not even going to talk about feelings. What I tend to talk about, I ask them, what do they think about things? Because the information's there, just don't use the feelings word, use the think word. Great. And they, could, so they could tell you what they think, and then telling you what they think, it tells me what's behind it. Yeah, I, I'm just smiling. You can't see me, but yeah. I've, I've just been smiling to talk because yeah. look, I'm going to bring this to a nutshell. You, you like I'm, I'm just thinking about some really feeling orientated counsellors I've met and know. Yeah. Right? In, in blokey world, they, do, they don't like blokey world and they don't even know how to navigate blokey world. Um, and I'm smiling because, look, let's just, what you said before is very insightful, so you can bring things back to, look, don't have to worry, you're not going to get too in touch with your feelings. We'll just work with what you think. Um, yeah. But in a nutshell, you can get on with blokey blokes, right? I can get on with blokey blokes, and I think it, that, that having that transport business was a great education yeah. for me. That's what I thought. Well, okay, guess, guess, what we're yeah. about, guess what we're about to go into. I don't know, you tell me. Okay, well, the RBA, RBA's just cut uh, rates again. We're uh, yes. in an upshift in the property cycle again. Uh, uh, my tradey friends, uh, and bizarre, I work in an area where there's more multimillionaire tradesmen than any other place in the world. Uh, they're, they're getting excited after having quite a few rough months. Yes. Um, and things are starting to shift and move again. So, do you think a tradie, so, so you could position a certain element of your coaching services mm -hmm. to men mm -hmm. who respond to how you counsel versus how the feeling style person wants to counsel them? Yes. They have money. And if they haven't had for a little while because their properties, there's been fear in the property market, they're going to yes. start having money again soon. Would you consider them a decent target market to position into? Uh, yes, I would. Yeah. Okay. Would they be willing to pay more if they feel safer with you? Even if that's just 20 bucks extra in an hour. That's highly possible. Yeah. So what we're looking at here is... We know, so I'm going to give you some homework to leave to, to, for, for you to leave with as well. We know, we've already talked about, look, your, your, your program should be what you should be concentrating getting people into for the obvious reason, mm -hmm. the passivity, continuity, income, that will actually position you so that they'll come to you and will be willing to, to pay more for your, your services. And now what we're looking at was how do we get you the time freedom and uh, to take away some of the financial stress so that you can spend more time yep. working on what you need to do to promote sure. the 
uh, course, sexy it up, make it highly attractive, put in uh, a webinar mm -hmm. as the entry to it and a Facebook or Google campaign before that, or, or go to JVs and have them distribute it for you. Any of those things would work. So we're trying to buy you the time. So that thing with the, with the, the uh, tradespeople, men that are disconnected from their feelings, that's one avenue because that's a, a marketplace that you can talk to. They want really good relationships, but they're afraid of having to deal with their feelings. So you mm -hmm. work into that niche and you're more likely to be able to charge them a higher amount. The more, more that you're able to get for your hour, the, um, uh, the more time you have to build the business. Does that make sense? It does, yeah. So, so really, really think about that. Um, mm -hmm. With the with with the tradies and and working into a tighter niche where you communicate to that niche and see be seen as the main problem solver in that niche. What will okay. happen in that niche is that niche will refer you to yes, yes, niche. of course, yes. Okay. Okay. So that, that's really important. There's another thing that I would like you to investigate. Yeah. Um, we have what we call A, B, or C clients. A clients, they really want an outcome. And what most people do in service businesses, they treat everyone the same. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, I'll just bring this back to me quickly. If I've got a client in front of me, I'm looking at them and I'm trying to find out, well, how sincere are you about getting what you say you want to get? And yes. I'm going to soon find out that some of them aren't that sincere. Okay. Yes. Yeah. But they're not really willing to do what it takes. Uh, a higher level person is really willing to do what it takes. Now there's a way of in, 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 in what's what we call the induction process. If someone comes to you and you can see that they're not right and you're starting to say no to people, but the right people that are right, that are willing to do what it takes, you go, well, I can really help you get that. I can really help you achieve that. So let's just imagine you, some, a builder who's got money, their relationship's not really that great. And part of the reason the relationship's not that great because they don't know how to communicate properly. Um, mm -hmm. And they've got money and they really love their wife and they really, really want to be with their wife and they really, really want to solve, solve this relationship. If you treat them differently to the person who's like, ah, uh, you know, a bit lackadaisical about the relationship, you'll get higher close rates and get more, more funds for what you do. So as an example, if you say to that person, well, how serious are you? And they go, I'm really, really serious. Okay, well, and you, this, you may do this after a couple of, couple of uh, appointments, by the way. You, you gotta look at how you can, how, how this works strategically and where it should go sure. in client interaction flow. Well, if you're really serious, you know, I've only got X number of spots, um, uh, and I only, want, I only work with people that are really serious. If you're really serious, this is what I'm going to offer you. You're going to work with me over the next blah, 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 blah. And it's at this rate. Now, can you see even communicating that way starts to position you differently to the client? Yes. Right? Yes, it does. Yeah. All right. And then you might say to another client who you know, and you quickly work out, well, look, I, I know that you, uh, uh, I can tell you, look, you, 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 well, you just know they're not that sincere. Look, if you're not willing to pay this, it's probably not that important to you. You might be better off seeing someone else. Now, these are scary strategies to people that uh, have uh, fear on the unconscious level or on the conscious level because they're going, but I'll miss out, on, I'll miss out, I'll miss out. Mm. No, the more you say no to the wrong person and yes to the, no to the wrong people and yes to mm. the right people and get them to prove that they're the right people, you're setting up yeah. other precedents and you can charge more for what you do. Yeah. Okay. I know you've got to go. Yep. I hope you got a lot from today and I hope the viewers and watchers yeah. got a lot. It's, I could have gone on with you for another hour. And I really thank you for, for joining me today. All right. Thank you, Perry. Thanks, Tracy. I hope you got a lot from today's show. If you're new to me and my work, make sure you do our entrepreneur and investor profiling system it will help you understand your gifts strengths and weaknesses as a wealth creator as an entrepreneur or as an investor and you will get that on my website you'll see a link to it on my home page so perrymardon.com will get you there also if you are interested in these subjects and deepening your knowledge of them join me in my 
Facebook group for investors and uh, business owners. And once again, you'll get that on the website or potentially, depending on where you are watching or listening to this, in a link down below. And if you're really, really serious, come and work with me. Book into a Breakthrough Profit Workshop. You won't have experienced anything like it before. But if you're gonna do that, please be aware you must be willing to face everything within yourself that is limiting and undermining you from going to the highest levels as an entrepreneur or investor. These are very truthful sessions where uh, I and my head coach, Georgina Comar, work with you to surface unconscious belief systems and behaviors that are undermining your ability to go to the highest levels in wealth creation. And we also spend time helping you understand your gifts, the best path for you as an entrepreneur or investor. And when we say the best, what's the most meaningful, enjoyable and profitable path for you. And we help you with any strategic challenges or issues. And we will give you best in class strategies for dealing with your challenges and helping you achieve your outcomes. And again, there'll be a link below or you'll find access to that on my website. And you won't get that from anyone else. We have a unique ability to read people as well as uh, give you the required strategies to get where you want. Till next time, see ya.